those that press their way out, amen, and thank God for the internet being available for those that are at home to tune in. So I ask you, if everyone please stand and pray with me as we begin tonight's study. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. <clears throat> so with that being said, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we say we love you. We thank you. We praise and magnify you. We thank you for giving us traveling grace to make it out tonight to hear another word from you, Lord God, and give us another opportunity to love on you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the airways being made clear for those at home can get the word, Lord God. They can hear your word, Heavenly Father, apply it to their lives, live it their lives, and share it with others as well. Father, I pray right now that I decrease as you increase. I thank you that your children should hear your voice in these words, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you that every word that we get, will, it will be an understanding because your word tells us in all of our getting to get an understanding. Lord, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Again, another opportunity for us to learn more of the Lord, learn more of his word. Um, I, I thank God for my brothers and sisters in Christ that always constantly keeps me filled with the word, um, especially words like teaching, 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 a word that means so much, but is very neglected. And that's part of the fivefold ministries. There are teachers mm -hmm. in the part of the fivefold ministry. And we know that the fivefold ministry is for the, for the, the um, perfecting of the saints. Amen. That's what the word says. And that means that, you know, we, this is how we learn. This is how we learn. We learn because we have teachers, we have professors. You know, when you go to school, regular school, even college, you got professors, you have teachers. You know, and when these teachers and professors are taken for granted, meaning they're, you know, if you don't think you need to listen to somebody, then I guess you know it all. And I don't think nobody knows it all. A person that knows it all has got dirt in their face right now. So they can't learn no more. Amen. Y'all don't know I me. Mean, they're six feet under. They're dead. Amen. So, so I just thank God for the opportunity to be taught. Amen. Amen. And when we are being taught, we should give our undivided attention to the word of God, the word that is being taught. Amen. Just like regular school, you should give your undivided to the teacher. If he's teaching you how to do trigonometry, and I know none of us, well, I ain't, ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say that. I don't know trigonometry unless somebody teach me the basic fundamentals of trigonometry. Then I can learn how to, you know, do what's supposed to be done. Amen. Amen. But this is the same way the word of God is. You don't know how to use the word of God or how to enjoy the word of God or how to apply the word of God if you're not taught. If you have not been given this word to understand it, there is no way that you can apply it. There's no way you can live it. And then there's no way to share it. Now, you may be able to share a word that you've been given, but it may not be the right words. Words can be taken out of context. This is why we need to study the word of God. Amen. Second Timothy 2.15 tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, that latter part, rightly dividing the word of truth, is very important. Because you cannot rightly divide something if you have not studied it. Amen? Amen. Oftentimes, we hear a lot of people spitting words out of their mouths. Words just falling out of their mouth because that's what they thought it meant. That's what they were told. But they never took the time to study it for themselves. Mm -hmm. They never took the time to ask a question. Some places don't even have the opportunity, don't even give you the opportunity to ask questions. Mm -hmm. You're being preached at all the time. Mm -hmm. We got a service on Sunday, we got a service Sunday evening, we got a service on Wednesday again. But there's no studying, there's no teaching. I see you, sir. It is very important for you to get into a teaching environment. Mm -hmm. So that you can understand what you're being told. Amen? Amen. I see you too, Deaconess. Go ahead, Pastor. And then Deaconess Lock. Amen. So, right now? Uh, now, right? Yes. Okay, here we go. I'm listening. I'm, I'm slow. Just being. 
No, I'm glad you're speaking about this because there's too many people out there who will tell you in a second that I read the Bible, I read the Bible, I read the Bible. But that's just it. Just reading the Bible without an understanding means absolutely nothing. And everyone, you know, so many people think they can just sit at home and read it and figure it out. But that ain't how the Bible works. You know, the scripture talks about through fivefold that you gave us. In fact, we're going to go to your Amen. Ephesians 4, 11. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4, 11. I'm reading the New King James Version. Okay. Okay. Ephesians 4 and 11. <coughs> New King James, you say? Yeah. I'm going to go a little old school here, New King James. Y'all there? Hold on. Amen. 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 Everybody ready? Yes, sir. Amen. All right, and it reads like this, starting at 11. It says, and he... It's, when it says he, you see his capital out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know we're talking about God, right? Mm -hmm. He himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. That's what's neglected most. So everybody want to be a, pro a prophet or an <laughs> apostle, right? It says, for the equipping of the saints for mm -hmm. the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, so we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. Now, when it says to a perfect man, it's talking about to uh, become mature. Mm -hmm. That's what it's talking Amen. about, to become Amen. mature. Amen? Mm -hmm. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, because when you're not mature, you're a child. Amen. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Mm -hmm. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him mm -hmm. who is the head, Christ. Amen. 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 From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every this is by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Amen. 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 So you know, just like you were saying, it's uh, it's just you know the fivefold ministry <clears throat> are basically the professors. This is true. This is what God designed them to be, the professors. And what he has done is given them special knowledge, right? special wisdom to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. The bottom line with rightly dividing the word of truth is giving people an understanding. Mm -hmm. God wants us to understand his word. That's why he tells us in, in, in Proverbs 4 and 7 and all of our getting to get understanding. Because if you don't have an understanding of God's word, then how are you going to use this, this word? Mm -hmm. You know, and when it talks about the... Uh, whole body of armor, full body of armor, mm -hmm. you know, we have one weapon. I mean, we have one, the rest of it is, is defense, but we got one offensive, offensive weapon, and that's the word. If Amen. you don't know how to use your offensive weapon, uh, what are you going to do? Defeat it. Mm -hmm. Well, I was at home, and I was trying to teach myself how to use this gun, and I accidentally shot a hole through the floor. Well, see, you should have went to class. Amen. You should have went to class, learned how to fire the weapon, learn how to be safe, learn this and learn that. But since you didn't do that, yeah, but I, I looked at it and I played with it for a little bit, so I know it. Oh, Amen. really? And that's what it is when people, when, when people talk about, oh, well, I read the Bible. From front to back, I read the Bible. I started in January, I started reading the Bible, and I finished in December. <laughs> and, and, and still don't know nothing. Why? Amen. Because as you know, one of the classes I had to learn in, uh, in IT was hexadecimal, dealing with hexadecimals. Now, when, when they threw that out there at me and showed me the hexadecimal numbers and stuff and what that was all about, I didn't have a clue what that was. I, I, all I saw was numbers and letters put together. Mm -hmm. I said, this is crazy. I said, no, who did this? This is some tomfoolery right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But then, when we got to, when they got to teaching about it, 
it taught me this is what we use, all right, this is a part of something that's used to help us put together an IP address so that we can tell how many different computers that you can actually put on that network. Amen. But see, I had to, I needed the professor to come in and actually explain it to me. I had the book, book meant nothing. I had to have it explained to me and, and, and I had to get an understanding. Once I got an understanding, then that's when I became effective being able to use that, that power, that, that not remember knowledge, knowledge is power. power. It ain't power until it's applied. Amen. Amen. Applied knowledge is power. Amen. Deacons, go ahead. Amen. This is good. It makes me really remember Bridget Jack too when I first um, got serious with God in my life. And yeah, I would always pound study, study on your own, study. But for <laughs> me, coming to Bible study showed me how to study the Amen. word of God. Amen. It actually broke it down and showed you how revelation comes alive when you're able to reference scripture by scripture. Study means the devotion of time and attention to acquiring knowledge on an academic subject, especially by means of books. The Bible's academics, y'all. It's academics. It's how you can pass in life. Amen. <laughs> and it brings me back to a scripture in Proverbs, and I have underlined Proverbs um, 14. 33 through 35 it says lady wisdom is at home in an understanding heart which means if you need wisdom you need understanding mm -hmm. it's available to you with a loving heart <clears throat> ready to show you how much god loves you how he's prepared things for you mm -hmm. Amen. and it says fools never even get to say hello those are people that don't even believe god mm -hmm. you don't even get a chance to get a glimpse of what God has for you because you don't believe in him and what he can do. Then it says God devotion makes a country strong. God avoidance leaves people weak. And I'm reading this in the message version, y'all. And when you are devoted to God, studying his God, studying God's word, it makes you strong. But when you, avo but when you avoid getting to know God, studying his word, how your life end up? You're weak against the enemy. Your finances, you're lacking. You're tearing down walls in your house. Your family is suffering because you are avoiding God. Amen. 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 Proverbs. Proverbs. 14. 14. 14. Yeah, 14. 14. I just want to add to what Okay. Y'all still messed it up. Proverbs what? 14. Everybody's talking. 14. 33. 14. 35. I read it in the message version. Okay. Thanks. Amen. Thanks for giving us time to catch up. I had a Proverbs 14. Lord, you said you want to say something in reference to that. I did. Um, oh, my God. Come, come back to me. Amen. Amen. Not a problem. You know, <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Deacon Slaw, for going there and um, explaining that to us. Listen, it takes me back to talking about teachers, professors, <clears throat> and it's going to bring it back around to the study, taking time to think before speaking. And then the scripture we used was be quick to listen, slow to speak. James 1, amen. <clears throat> Sorry. So with that, in a classroom environment, I'm so grateful for this classroom environment that we have, where we have given the opportunity to ask questions. Amen? Amen. We're given opportunity to ask questions after we are been, we've been presented something. When this word is presented to us, if we don't understand it, we can raise our hand and ask a question. And once one question is being asked, that opens up the floor for other people to either ask more questions or expound on it, or give it, you know, explanation of it. But every word is given an explanation by way of this word, the word itself. The Bible references itself. Amen. Let's make that clear. So, but in order to understand that, you have to be taught and study it to know that the Bible references it itself. Amen. And do you know that it is very important that when we're being taught, I used the word undivided attention earlier because if you don't give the undivided attention to who's teaching, amen, or what's being taught, you're quick to open your mouth to expound on something that you had just 
that, that you can relate to. A lot of people, and I see Deaconess first, then Pastor, um, I, I see a lot of people open their mouths to say something about something that they can relate to before they actually hear the whole conversation or the, the whole study, amen? And then you have just interrupted something because you want to be quick to say something. Go ahead, Deaconess, then Pastor, then this is really good, you know, the fact that, you know, <clears throat> listening to someone, getting an understanding of what they're talking about, and of course, um, in a, uh, what we get now, where we're studying uh, the word, and so we can apply it to our life, and so we can share it. So I had a conversation with a young lady today um, at one of the pharmacies, and she always tell me about how one of her coworkers speak ill sickness over her i said she shouldn't do that she shouldn't play like that because here it is she's speaking sickness over her and it's gonna happen mm -hmm. and so um she was saying how one of the co-worker recognized her 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 evil spirit and and she told him that she wasn't coming back i said because she recognized her spirit <laughs> but i'm telling you right now don't let her touch or, or nor pray over you because the spirits ain't no good. She said, but I'm afraid to come in here. I said, you know what, guess what? I'm, I'm not telling you what I don't know. I'm, telling, I'm not telling you what I don't know. I'm telling you what I know, how God is so amazing. I said, you speak it before you even come in this building. You, you tell God, you know, shield protection. You know, no weapon against you. It's, it's not gonna form. And so we was having a long Amen. prosper, you know, mm -hmm. prosper. And so um, she was like, she felt better. And because she said she's always coming here doing like certain things and, and just speaking like, like she had a stroke. I said, she don't want that. She don't want that. So she needs to stop it. So I give her the information. Of course, she she's studying too. I said, and you know, give her, give her some information. But she was like, uh-uh, I'm like, I don't, you know, I'm afraid to come in and not talk. <laughs> you, 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 God is for you. Amen. So I love the study that you're giving. Amen. And, it, and it's a good thing, and I see you, Pastor, and Pastor, it's a good thing that you did share those words with her, you know, because now she's not alone, first of all. She's not alone. Um, and then you give her valuable information that she can go take back and study even more so that she can gain more spiritual strength, amen? Some more fighting power, you know, something that she can really now, uh, she may not know that God has not given us the spirit of fear, okay. but a power, love, and a sound mind. Oh, yeah, and I told him, I said, and, and he will. Amen, sure. amen. And you just keep doing that, amen. Go ahead, Pastor, and then evangelist. Um, you know, I like what the Deaconess was saying because I can remember when um, I had someone who was, uh, you know, they had a satanic Bible. Mm -hmm. I've never told y'all about this before. This guy, he had a satanic Bible. And, you know, I, I had the Bible, the Holy Bible. And he was like, you know, that can't protect you. And I was telling him, dude, what are you talking about? This will protect you. <laughs> he said, I can put a spell on you right now. I said, you can't put no spell on me right now because I'm a child of the Most High God. Amen. I belong to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then he did this little, you know, little witch hunt thing, whatever it was he did, right? <laughs> and he said, now you watch. And sure enough, a couple of, about, I wasn't even a week later, the very thing he was trying to put on me, he had put on himself. Wow. Mm. Wow. I said, hey. see, you, the Bible says, you do that? touch not my anointed, <laughs> do my prophets no harm. Amen. You know, and Amen. then I wasn't even nowhere near his verse in, in the, you know, the word as I am, but I did know I was a child of God. Amen. And, you know, and, and think about um, studying the Bible, people have to be taught how to study. Amen. You just can't tell somebody, go study the Bible. And Amen. I, I think we got a bad habit of doing that. Go study the Bible, you know. Where should, a lot of people want to know where they should start reading the Bible, not tell people in church. There you go. Because you have to get, you know, you need to start in Bible studies or Sunday schools because 
you can't just, a lot of people say, well, start in Proverbs. Well, you can't start. I mean, Proverbs is the book of wisdom. It's true, but you can't forget that there are a lot of things in there that, that dealt with, dealt, you know, dealt with the law. You know, when it talks about how, <laughs> what is it? There are six things that God hates the seven that are an abomination <laughs> to him. You know, you read all that stuff, you'll be all messed up. You don't know how to study. You're exactly. not taught that, hey, there's a difference between the law and grace. And right now we're under the dispensation of grace. And, you know, people, and so this is why it is so important for people uh, that they need to be taught how to study. And context is the key. Amen. Context is the key. You have to keep the word in context. And then if you feel like, okay, well, I'm not quite sure what that will say. Well, the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So you'll find two or three other scriptures, right, that's mm -hmm. going to point to that one or in the exact same direction that it's going in. Amen. So it's, 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 it's a technique to it. You know, it's just not you pick up the Bible, open it up, and stick your finger in there. And say, okay, this is what God wants me to read. <laughs> if my hand offends me, cut it off. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, let me do this again. Let me do this again. <laughs> you know, if my eye offends thee, pluck it out. Oh, whoa, whoa, hold up. Let me turn a couple of pages. <laughs> <laughs> let me come back to this. You place. vipers, you sons of hell, who saved you? Wait a minute, let me turn this some more. And then people. Some people are taught to go to Revelation. Mm -hmm. Revelation is a book that nobody should ever start, start in. with. Nobody should ever start with Revelation because the book of Revelation is, is there's a lot of symbolism in the book of Revelation. And so in order to understand the book of Revelation, you have to understand everything before. The, yeah, you have to understand the old covenant and the new covenant. Amen. 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 Pray God. Thank you again for that, Pastor. Evangelist and then Elder. Amen. I want to go back to when you were saying um, when a person listens. Well, not, they're not even listening. When a person hears you talking and they don't listen to what is being said, but they just hear so that they can respond, then they don't ever really gain the knowledge that they need to gain. Um, and I say that because it, I love the teaching that we get in here because you don't even know that you're sharing it because it flows out of you so naturally in your everyday life. Mm -hmm. And as you were speaking, it reminded me of a half a campus that have two young ladies that are very vocal. That's the best word I'm going to use. That's, that's a good choice. That's They're very vocal. Um, and everything that they want to say, the managers come back for. She comes back. And then, but the way she come back is not incorrect, but then they come back. And it's like an ongoing battle. So today I was over there because their freezer went down and I went to go help them, you know, pack the freezer. So they came and they was like, hey, Miss Shantae, how you doing? Da -da -da -da. We talking, because we have a great relationship. They know. When I walk in, let's get it done. Amen. Um, so they go over and they was talking and I was like, it's 2024. And she was like, Miss Shantae, I promise I've been good. I promise I've been good. I said, today is 17 of 2024. You, I promise Miss Shantae. And then the other one was like, whoa. Up until today, she was, and I was like, you know what? Let's pray. And they instantly grabbed my hand, <laughs> hand in the dishwater. I got bubbles all over me. And they was like, well, just pray, because when you pray, we we do better. So I prayed. So then instantly, I told them, and I looked them in face because they are coming into their maturity yeah. as women as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. I looked at them in the face and I said, when you totally listen to what someone has to say, do not interrupt them, do not hear to respond, listen. I said, I can promise you, your clap back will be more powerful than anything that they've ever thrown at you. And then they just looked at me. I, they did. They just looked at me because they always say, how come she always got something to say whenever we just ask a question? I said, because you don't listen. 
<laughs> but today, for some reason, they got it. And yeah. if you took me back to the word that God has used it again, slow Amen. to speak. Amen. We're quick to listen. When we're slow to speak and listen truly to the word of God when it is given us, it makes us powerful Amen. against Amen. the enemy. Amen. 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 That is awesome. Go ahead, Elder. Amen. Um, that was great what Vance was talking about. But as I was listening to Pastor talk, it made me laugh because everything that he was talking about before I got into a Bible believing, Bible teaching, Church, that's exactly what I did. I was sitting there and I was like, man, where where, where do I start reading? And then, you know, trying that old mystical stuff. Oh, I'm going to close my eyes and wherever I open this, that's where God wants me to start reading. And so, and, and so we read there and then once you get to reading and it's the King James, I'm like, wait, hold on. Man, uh, wait a minute. Some of this I don't even... Yeah, let's go. Let me, let me try this another time. And then I did the same thing to where, oh, let me go start in Revelation. <laughs> Reading the Revelation, and now I was like watching a horror movie. Yeah, you did and stuff. And I was like, sleep with the lights man, on. I'm like, hold on. Then, then you start getting around the people that's talking. That you're going to hell if you, you going to hell if you this and this and that. And you, and you done read Revelation, so you just start to believe what they're saying. <laughs> And stuff because you don't have no teaching, you don't have you don't have a solid foundation, exactly. and, and and it goes with that saying that people say the blind leading the blind mm -hmm. and stuff and so and, and that's what it is. When you are set free, don't let anybody or any situation put you back in bondage. Amen. Don't put yourself back in bondage. Once you are free, yeah, stay sure. free. Once you are free, stay free. Mm -hmm. Continue to walk. In the news, continue to walk sure. in your freedom. Amen. So don't let situations bound you up. Don't let situations get back. Oh, well, then you start speaking the old cliches and, and everything. And more month than money when it rains and pours and, <laughs> and all this So, oh, well, I shouldn't ask God for this. I should just be satisfied with what I have and all that. And, and he doesn't ever say nothing like that and stuff. And then you start going back to all these old rambling rants and traditions that people used to speak <laughs> instead of speaking the word. Because when you have that solid foundation of the truth, you're held accountable for what you know. Amen. Notice I said for what you know. Amen. So Amen. if you don't know, like I said, that's the definition of being ignorant. Because you don't know. And it's but when you know, you got you got to you got to stand on what you know. Amen. Amen. I see you deacons, but it's very good that you went there, elder, because you know. Um, a lot of people don't understand that the things they don't know and they are so quick to feel guilty about not knowing. And I'm going to give you one little area. People will hold themselves accountable for something that God has not held them accountable for. Something that religion has put in their mind. Something that tradition has put in their mind. So they I'll take communion mm -hmm. as, as an illustration. That's a good illustration. People will not take communion because they don't understand what communion is all about. They have been traditionally taking communion or given communion by someone that don't understand what communion was all about. They tell you, don't take communion if you have not forgiven well, your brother you or your sister. If you have unforgiveness in your heart. If you have unforgiveness in your heart. You, have sin in your life. you know, all these things. Now here it is. You're holding yourself guilty about something that you shouldn't be holding yourself guilty about. Communion is not about that. Communion is about what Jesus has done for us. Do this in remembrance of me. Whether you, you're taking the bread or the wine. Do this in remembrance of him. Oh, it's I, oh, got you. So I, I just wanted to bring that out because you know people need to know the truth. Mm -hmm. People need to know the truth. They need to know how to um, really take this word in. In order to apply it, you got to understand it. You, you shouldn't. You can't apply anything 
that you don't understand. You will always be wrong. Go ahead. Take it. You know, it's funny. It's funny because I was listening to Elder Locke talking about how he started with the book and going through it. And I remember when I first, you know, I was going to church, but we never had a Bible. And, yeah, the hymnal. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, yeah, you could say that. Then my mom had a Bible, and then, you know, I got a Bible, uh, and it had to be the King James Version. I don't know why, and I didn't understand what I was reading. But one time, what happened was I lost my job. So I go, oh, my, and I, I got to pray to God because I, I need a job. You know, I need a job. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Job. Oh, I, job. <laughs> job. Job. Mm, let me look. Let me see. And I'm I'm trying to understand oh, what I'm Bible. reading. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm trying to understand what I'm reading the King James Version. I said, I don't understand none of this, Lord. But I need a job. J-O-B. Jump, okay? Uh-uh, uh, uh, that is too much. See? <laughs> so see God saying, I can see God saying, poor baby. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. I'm going to give you a joke. <laughs> no, but the funny thing is when I came here and I had, uh, you know, we were talking and I I had a testimony. Hey, you know, I needed a job. And I said, there goes the word. You said job. And everybody was laughing at me, and I was like, what, what's wrong? What's wrong? That's a, not a name, Job. I said, oh, my God. Well, th- I'm glad I'm here. So I know what I'm talking about now. Amen. And that's Amen. the funny part. Amen. Because for me, I never really touched the Bible. Mm-hmm. I never really went into a Bible. And because we, we didn't do Bibles. My mother had this little piece of paper, and in the little piece of paper, it said, the Our Father and the Hail Mary are. <laughs> and she would recite it every night. This is what we sat there, and we prayed every night, those two two things, all six of us, including her. And we sat, and that's how we prayed. But that's not how I pray now. Amen. I don't go Our Father. I don't go Hail Mary. I, I said, thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Uh, I know it's going to be a great day. Everything's going to run smooth because I trust and believe in you. And if anybody comes to me, give me some kind of whatever it is, I'm going to give the word. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 That's what I do. Amen. <laughs> but you know, in that in that alone right now, it just shows that you were ignorant at the time. Mm-hmm. You didn't know. You were just ignorant. So does it mean you was dumb? Does it mean you were stupid? No. It mm. means that you were ignorant. But and to me. Exactly. He met her exactly where she was. The thing is about this, listen, people don't know. They get offended when someone says they're ignorant. That, that's nothing to be offended about. That means they just don't know. And what you tell them is, okay, well, teach me then. Since I'm so ignorant, teach me what I need to know. You know, it's okay to do that. Because too many times right now people are being led astray. In the church, because of their ignorance, because they don't know that someone is just speaking out of traditions, out of religion. If you don't know, you can't hold yourself guilty about not knowing until you're taught. When you're taught and you know something, now, as Elder Lock was talking, about you be held accountable for what you know. But I, I, I pray that we all know what is right, what is true. This is why we're here today in this setting, to get the true, unadulterated word of God. Yeah. Amen. You just pray everybody learning. A- the amen. There you go, sir. Because just like we said, everybody, we don't know everything, but but we need to keep learning. Mm-hmm. Yes. Everybody, we need to keep learning. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, people talk about what you were saying, the uh, the bread, you know, the uh, communion, and they, they do, they they really take it out of proportion. And the thing about it, if you go back and you read, you just need to read First Corinthians chapter 11, period. And when the person go back and read that, they'll see that, oh, this is what it means by 
taking it unworthily. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with, you know, all this other crap. Well, you know, you sin or uh, you you have unforgiveness in your life, so you can't take it. And I mean, the truth of the matter is, if that was the case, nobody on this planet would ever be able to take, take communion. communion. Mm-hmm. You know, when 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 they when they had the Last Supper, the Last Supper was a type of communion because it was the bread and, and the it was wine. the wine, and he was telling them, "This is my body, you know, and this is my blood." And the thing about it, he didn't talk to tell they one of those disciples that was there, and there was more than the disciples. There was also women there too. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they'll they'll mm-hmm. put that in the, in the picture, no, 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 right? No. Now, one of them that he said, "Well, first you need to forgive everybody that you know, <laughs> and you need to make sure that your life, uh, you 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 have no sin in your life. You need to ask God for your forgive for for forgiveness right now before you take this, or you're going to get sick when you take it." You know, it, Jesus didn't say none of that. No. It amazes me how much the church say that Jesus didn't, didn't say. say. <laughs> mm. and, and it's because of, as you were saying, ignorance. Pure mm. ignorance. They've been passing down stuff for, for years, years, and years. Just traditions. You know, just like the uh, when we talked about the, the, the uh, roast in the pan. Oh, you ready to go? Yep. The roast in the pan. Oh, mama, mama. Why we got the, the ends <laughs> off the roast? Before you put it in the pot. Oh, I don't know. Let's ask Grandma. Grandma, why do you cut the ends off the roast before you put it in the pot? Well, I don't know. My mom used to do that, so that's why I do it. So let's ask Great Great Grandma. <coughs> great Great Grandma, why do you put why do you cut the butts off the, the ends off of the roast before you put it in the pot? And she said, Well, uh, I would cut the ends off because the pot wasn't large enough. So in order to get the roast to fit into the pot, I had to cut the ends off. So all these years, nothing but tons of meat wasted. Been wasted. Meat. Four generations of meat been wasted. One pot than meat. <laughs> because the they never meat. had understanding. Yes, it's your What? Because they never had an understanding. Amen. And they continued to pass down tradition and nobody ever asked a question. Until they got to that fourth generation child who said, Mom, why do we do this? And folks in the church are afraid to ask the question because there are pastors right now that have made people feel ashamed to ask the question. And that is wrong. That is what we're here to do. We are... you know, people talk about, well, you know, if I come to your church and got questions, I tell them I'm tailor made for you. Hey, there you go. I got put you got questions, I got answers. Come, come. <laughs> come on out. I'm tailor made for you, just for you. Amen. And and everywhere else they go, they always say, Well, you know, I wanted to ask the pastor a question, but they said that uh, you know, I shouldn't talk to the pastor like that or I shouldn't be asking them questions. I just need to go home and read it and I say, you know what, that's a bunch of mess. <laughs> Delonda then take this card up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Take time to think before speaking. Amen. Yes. <laughs> so this afternoon I was having a text conversation with my mom. Um, I've been hanging photos in my apartment and I sent with them this wall that I did and it shows like a timeline, right? And it's got my parents, my biological parents, my mom and dad. And then me, my kids, when my son graduated, he joined the Army. And then my parents got married, Rita graduates, and then she joins the Army. That's the timeline, and then I put my grandbaby. So then my mom responded with, ooh, I told your dad to go get that picture of him and your mom so that we could hang it on our wall here at the house. And I was like, did you ask your husband about how he felt about hanging that picture on the wall? And you know, I appreciate what she's trying to do. She wants me to understand that, you know, I guess you know, she wants us to be comfortable or something. I get it. But I asked that question because just two months ago, he couldn't even tell you that he saw a woman in the grocery store who resembled my mom because he didn't want to upset you. So I don't know that he wants to hang a photo of them in the house. Well, y'all gonna walk by every day. So have you asked him how he feels about it? Her immediate response is, he will do as I ask. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I 
ask if you asked him how he felt about it. Yeah, it's very that, that that was the question. Um, and I'll forgive you for the tone <laughs> in which you responded in this text message. But <laughs> I, I didn't ask if he would or wouldn't do what you asked him to do. I just asked if you had a conversation with your husband about this concept. So I got back this long response. I read it and I immediately heard a soft answer turn it the way around. Right. And I thought, well, honestly, there is no no there is no real answer. I'm just asking have you asked your husband how he feels about hanging a photo of his deceased wife of 20 years on a wall in a house when y'all are supposed to be making memories of you all in your home. That's all I'm asking. So I just never responded to the message. I never responded. I went on cleaning. Then I thought about, you know, God, that was it was best for me to take the time and just walk away from that mm -hmm. because um, I understand what she wants to do. She, But at the same time, you can't sacrifice his feelings in this home mm -hmm. so I'll circle back with my dad directly because I tried to I tried to ask her since she's so hell-bent on it but then I'm, I just go to him and I thought you know I'm so thankful for the lesson because then I kept hearing that take the time to think before speaking because honestly when she hit me with he'll do his ass I promise you I almost said a bunch of other things that's very colorful and I was like, well, I can't do that now. When I hear I done posted all this stuff on Facebook today, that was really nice. And then it just wouldn't be right. You know, what if she screenshot that and put it on Facebook? Then I would be jacked up, right? But I wouldn't care because I did it. It's me. I own it. However, it just still wouldn't be right. But take the time to think before speaking. And then I was in a much better space an hour later Amen. because I didn't cut her off. You know what I'm saying? And say something very hurtful um, when I just was trying to understand to help them, you know what I mean? Because I just think that would be really detrimental for them. Yeah. Yes. Would she do that if, would she like it if it was on the opposite foot? The see, shoes on the opposite thing. foot? That's the thing, she didn't take the time to think. Mm -mm. She didn't take the time to think. Mm -mm. Even in seeing what you put out there, she, she didn't take the time to think. She just reacted and said what she wanted to say. And it, and it goes back to when Sean was talking, um, we haven't gotten to a place yet, because normally with other people I will say, uh, are you listening to respond? Are you listening to hear? Mm. But because I, I truly was like, I think it's just best to not even respond anymore, because you're so hell-bent on letting me know mm. that he's going to do as you ask, he'll do as you say in this oh, moment. Like, he's not a child. He's not, you know, he's, he is a person with feelings. That's all I'm saying, right? And I just let it alone. I just, mm -hmm. I walked away from it. That was the movie. Country I walked away from it. Three. <laughs> no, not in, not in the Johnson family. <laughs> Go ahead. First of all, Jolanda, that's really good that you, your response was um, softly. <laughs> it was boring. You know, um, two things, you know, I, I was sitting here and I was listening to Deaconess Locke and I remember I went through a situation with a loved one. You know, sticks and stones will break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Nice. Words will put you in the ground and words will take you to another level that you just go completely blind and you about to do some damage. I thank God for his grace and I thank God for his mercy. I thank God in spite of what we say or do, he still don't forget me and he forgives me. I remember one time when we was taking communion and I know better and I knew in the, in the remembrance of him. But during that time, the flesh was already rise up to the fullest. You heard the words, just didn't listen to them. I heard it, but I didn't listen, right? And Deacon Brown said, what you doing? I said, Deacon, I hope God forgive me because Monday morning I'm laying some hands. He said, Deke, you know what you're doing? You know? So I'm going to need you to take 
this communion. And you know what I say, you know, he, you know, you, you, you right, you right, I know better. I know, I know better, I did take the communion. But I'm not gonna sit, sit here and lie and say that the thoughts of my minds on Monday morning coming and laying my hands on some person, a person with they, what they did. You can say and do what you want to to me, but when it comes to my kids, it's a whole different ball game. Again, at that time, I wasn't, I, I did listen to them. I listened to Deacon Brown and my husband because Lord knows where I would have been that I don't want to be. But we have to l listen and don't react quick. Don't react quick because then if we were act quick, then we'd be like, dang, I, now why I'm here? Mm -hmm. uh, take it back. Yes, and again, I, I'm glad that the study is online because we have to, we have to, you know, humble ourselves before action. Amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> everyone keeps saying uh, slow to slow to speak and quick to listen. Mm -hmm. The other part of this that's resonating within me is uh, you have to have selective hearing, meaning you can't listen to what everybody's saying. Just like what she said, or oh, words will take you to another level. Well, don't listen to it. Turn it out. You know, you have to know what's good for you to hear and what's bad for you to hear. Just like, you know, we were talking about you can't be under everybody's sermon. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be in everybody's church because everybody's not preaching of the word. You know, they're not preaching uh, to follow Jesus. You know, so you have to know what's good for you to take in and what's bad for you. Just like your diet. You know, you have to know that I can't eat this. Because if I eat this, this will do this to my body. I need to eat this. And so we have to have what they call selective hearing. You know who to listen to, what to listen to, and who not to listen to, and what not to listen to, and know the difference between them. Amen. Well, I, I'm going to respond to that. <clears throat> this is where it takes us to take the time to think. Yep. So just like you said, selective hearing or listening. That means that you heard something, mm -hmm. but before you opened your mouth to respond to that, you had to process some things, causing you to think. Now, if you didn't take the time to process it, you'll just blurt out anything. Mm -hmm. Whether you got selective listening exactly. or not. Exactly, whether you got selective listening or not. So that's why it says, that's why the title is Take the Time to Think Before speak. Speaking. Because every time we open our mouths and something comes out, it ain't going back the way it went out. Two pace. There you go. So we have to remember that when you hear something, I don't care what it is, when you hear something, you need to process it. Let it process. That means that you're, you're thinking now. You're thinking. You're doing what you're supposed to do. You're thinking. Wait, okay, I heard that, but let me see. Because that, how does that line up? And, I, and I'm, I'm talking about with anything. It, it, you mean, a lot of people don't bump what they hear against the word all the time. And that's the mistake. That's the mistake. Okay? So, because they don't know, because they're not in a teaching environment, because they have not been taught to really uh, line things up with the word of God. So, and if they learn, line things up with the word of God, is it the word of God that is true? Is it in, in a understanding of what the word of God is? Do they have the correct understanding? Or is it religion or is it tradition that they're bumping the words against? You know, it's funny that we talked about that, that pot roast and why they cut the ends off. Mm -hmm. Now, my reaction to that was, oh, that's part of me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we can take it as a joke. You know what I'm saying? But the truth of the matter is they were led astray because they never got an understanding. Because of tradition. And this is how people do with the word of God today. They take what they was told from tradition and that's the only thing they know how to apply. That's the only thing they know how to live by. So when somebody comes with the true word of God, now they have to take the time out before they open their mouth. They got to take the time out to process it. Amen? Go ahead, sir. 
And you know, and that's that's why the scripture says, mm -hmm. you know, you, we, we, that's what we started off with, James 1, 19 and 20. Exactly. That's why the scripture tells us to, to be quick to listen and slow to speak. All right. I mean, you know, it's we can say other things, but if it ain't lining up with scripture, what we're saying is just our opinion, and that don't really matter. There you go. There you go. And so the scripture, this scripture here will save marriages. Amen. Amen. Same marriage. You know, people, the biggest problem in any marriage is communication. Communication. Amen. People, Amen. people are afraid to talk to one another. People don't talk to one another. One person is trying to talk and the other one is immediately cutting them off. You know, and Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> you know, we ain't told Jesus. But, um, <laughs> you know, and, and they cut one another off, and it just escalates. Mm -hmm. And then, just like um, the scripture said, the one that took for somebody, I believe this Psalms. Proverbs. No, 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 I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about uh, a soft answer. Oh, 15 and 1. Psalms 15. Proverbs, Proverbs 15, 15 and, 1. and 1. A soft answer turns away wrath. Exactly. You know, but we don't do that, do we? We get all of that, and then what do we do? We escalate. And, and, and people call, you know, nowadays they got this thing, they call it gaslighting. Not only they gaslight, you know what? You're adding fuel to the fire. You know, and, and God has given us a way to pull the oxygen out of that fire. You know what I mean? And the way we do it is have a soft answer, be quick to listen, and slow to speak. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Go ahead. Take I, I'm glad Pastor went there. Because, you know, um, last week, one of the co-workers, was, she got kind of upset. And my reaction was, can you let me finish what I'm doing over here? And then I can tend to you. <laughs> and she just kept screaming. And she kept, kept getting loud. She gasped you. She got so loud. I said to the child, go play. I gotta go take care of something. So my reaction was, I didn't even come. I didn't even go to her. What I did was, I went straight to the source. I went right to where I needed to go. I picked it up and then I said. Then I went to the other room and I said, "Can I please get your cell phone, please? Thank you." And I put the cell phone. Then I went to her, and I said, "Everybody's cell phones in here. You see it? You see everybody's cell phones in here." Then I put the basket back where it was. She just, it just escalated more. She just started screaming and they had, they, they, they had their cell phones. La, 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 la. I said, it looks like it's in the basket to me. That's what my head was saying. <laughs> I didn't even talk to her. I said to her, do you, and this is the tone that I was taking, do you need to take a minute to walk out the door and take a breather, a breather, and then come back? Do you need to just walk away for a second? And she just kept screaming at me. And she just kept, and then it came to the point where I said, you need to stop, stop. And one of my coworkers came out and she said, you need to stop yelling. There's kids in here and you're yelling in here. And the first reaction that came out of her mouth was, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. And I said to myself, what is she kid? Yeah. Is she a child? A child. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, I walked away. And I'm glad that God changed me. Amen. Amen. I'm glad God changed me. Because the New Yorker in me would have gone up to her and told her off and kicked her out. Then I would have lost my job. In two languages. <laughs> yes. And let me tell you, I was not talking to her in English. I was talking to her in Spanish. In the language that she needed to, I needed her to understand what I was telling her. Amen. Because I knew she didn't understand that much English. So I had to talk to her in her language. You met her where she was at? Yes. Now, she walked out the door and she thought that she could come back. And my first reaction was, I called my supervisor, I spoke to my supervisor, then I called the main person in the office, and I said, and I did not stop her from walking out the door. Now we call the police. I said, I was done. 
And I don't understand why she's like that. And then I said to myself, does she have a mentality where she needs to re renew her thinking? Mm -hmm. Because everything is, well, you let her do that. You let this one do And I keep wanting to tell her, what is it to you? <laughs> what? And I kept telling her that. What is it to you? Because you don't know if they came and talked to me. So what is it to you? That's, that's and, yeah. and it's bad because people like that kind of trying to disturb your inner peace. Mm -hmm. And she sure did. She disturbed my inner peace. Mm -hmm. I was planning to go on Friday. I couldn't go. <laughs> I had such a bad headache and I was stressed and I was tired. By the time I got home, I was in tears because she really hurt me deep inside. Because I thought she was better than that. And people like that, I need to a distance. And I'm glad that God helps me. Amen. Because if not, mm, I would have lost my job. Amen. Well, you could have helped her. You could have helped her. You could have said, you're fired. <laughs> you know, but you know what? You know what? See, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad what Daisy was. Because what didn't happen was you didn't speak from emotions. You didn't speak out of the way you were feeling and what was going on. You didn't escalate because she escalated. You see, so, yes, if she spoke out of her emotional feeling, you're fired. No, I don't think she would have said that out of no. her emotions, out of her emotions. Well, well out, out, of, out of the reacting of the way that the escalation went, you know. But um, I, I want to go back just a little bit because we're, we're short on time right now, but I do want to get this out. Listen, we talked about communication. We talked about, you know, a soft answer turns away wrath. We talked about a lot tonight. Pastor spoke and said, you know, um, communication is one of the things that really tear marriages up. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth of the matter is it tears relationships up, period. period. And, and even though you may not be married, you know, it's just like our relationship. We're married to Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. When we received him as our Lord and Savior, we married ourselves to him. Mm -hmm. We took on his name. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, um, he, Christ, is love. He, Christ, has every good thing for us. Everything he do for us is to set us up for greatness, for good, for prosperity, for victory, success, everything. That's all he's, that's what he has for us. But when we don't talk to him, mm. when we don't communicate with him, mm. when we don't show him the love that he shows us, mm. when we don't even think of him when he's thinking of us, all right now. <laughs> you are segregating and separating yourself from him. He's never left you. You're leaving him. But this is the same way it happens in relationships and marriages. You're living in the same house, sleeping in a separate bed. You're living in the same house, eating the different food. You talking to somebody on the phone here, and you talking to somebody on the phone here, but you're never talking to each other. There's no, no line of communication anywhere. So you have separated yourself in the house. The Bible says a house divided cannot stand. But however, you still stay in it. Now, I'm going to say this. Get it together, people. And what I'm talking about is your relationship with Christ. Communicate with him more. Show more of him than you do of yourself. Show more of Christ than you do of yourself. Meaning, if you took on his name, you receive him as your Lord and Savior. His word is in you. Now you need to get in his word so that you can give more of his word. The more of him you got in, the more of him you can give out. The more of the word that you have in, the more word you can speak to others. I mean, you know, it, it, for a while, it, it puzzled me that the first time I, I really stubbed my toe and said, oh, thank you, Jesus, I learned I had more of him in me than I had cuss words. Mm -hmm. And that was a great feeling. And, and now that, that's my way of, 
when, when something happened, I stubbed my toe, I hit my finger, whatever. When I say thank you, Jesus, lets me know I still got a finger, I still got a toe, and I'm in love. I can give him the praise for that. Amen. Go ahead, sis. You know, that was good that you said the communication with God, um, just as, as a husband and wife, and you will be amazed when you start communicating with God, you'll hear more from oh, him. Oh, yes. Amen. You'll understand him, and you'll get that revelation and the knowledge to be able to apply his word to your situation, to things that are going on. And when you can constantly communicate with him, then you'll know the same power that you ask, and I'm going to use you, Pastor, Pastor, to pray for a situation for. God has already given you that exact power. Amen. It's just the communication. Amen. Open that line of communication so God can give you the exact same words that he's going to give pastor to give to you. Amen. He's Amen. already given it to you anyway. Mm -hmm. You just couldn't hear him because you got your phone on mute. Mm. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I want to thank everyone for t uh, that tuned in by way of internet. You know, um, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, getting the word of God and I pray that you have gotten and heard what the Lord is saying to you here at Christian Freedom Ministries we love you we want to let you know that yes tonight is Bible studies it started at 730 to 830 on Sunday our Sunday school starts at 945 to 1045 service starts at 11 o'clock okay we're, you're invited to come out and enjoy what we're enjoying and that is the fruit of our labors from the word of God and understand this, we're here in the no judgment zone. Come as you are. And also, whom the sun set free is free indeed. Stay free. God bless you. Amen.